Secretary Blinken, um, those who give up potential liberty for temporary security deserve neither liberty nor security. Uh, big government plays a broad, a broad role in our lives because they decide which banks to bail out with our money and whether or not they're somehow protecting you by collecting your telephone data and your, uh, and your location data. Um, I believe I'm credible to talk to, about this because I've gone to several conferences in the past couple of weeks and I've always listened to political and economic talk shows. Um, throughout the speech, I intend to thoroughly convince you guys on the merits of personal uh, individual liberty and the perils of um, overly big government. And I intend to do that by talking about, firstly, the problems big government causes, specifically how big government causes those problems and solutions we can take. First, um, what are the problems big government causes? Firstly, they cause economic instability and recession and invasion of fundamental privacy. According to the article, uh, Market Crashes, Housing Bubble and Credit Crisis, 2007 to 2009, published on Investopedia.com and written by Andrew Beattie, former managing editor and longtime writer of Investopedia.com, Dale Hinton, uh, the S&P 500, which is an index of 500 stocks chosen by many factors to indicate U.S. equities and reflect the risk, uh, return, characteristics of the economy, declined 57% from its high in October 2007 of 1,576 to its low in March 2006 of 676. Also, many indicators uh, such as the TED uh, spread or the option adjusted spread on corporate bonds reached record highs throughout that time period. Essentially, what the housing bubble of 2008 or the financial crisis of 2008 was was when people uh, spurred on by government incentives decided to keep buying houses which uh, substantially raised the prices until nobody could afford them anymore, thus dumping all the uh, malinvestments on people and essentially on taxpayers because the investments went to people, the, the investments from the people went on to the banks and then the investments from the banks went on to us because banks are too big to fail. Uh, another thing is that privacy is dead. According to NSA Gov 1 info slash data, author and date uh, omitted, which is not an official government website, but is one dedicated to uh, exposing NSA methods and goals, says that it is the NSA's objective to collect all available information from all available sources, all the time, every time, always. This includes, but is not limited to things such as internet searches, emails, phone call records, text messages, and even Skype video calls. This is essentially in parallel to the writs of assistance of 1761, which essentially gave officers the ability to search private businesses and people and interrogate people with no specificity as to the time, date, or manner of it. Um, so now that we've talked about some of the problems, let's move on to the causes and the direct causes by which the government does that. Firstly, they do it through the intervention of free markets and also by uh, not respecting the Constitution. According to Richard Salzman, PhD graduate of Duke University, in the article, The Financial Crisis Was a Failure of the Government, Not Free Markets, published September 19, 2013, the real estate bubble of 2008 was caused by government intervention in the real estate market, specifically the intervention of the Fed, FDIC, FHA, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac. Now, essentially what these, group, uh, what these programs were intended to do were to make it so that people who could not originally have the proper credit to buy houses could now do so by insurance of government backing. What this allowed to happen was it allowed people to make investments that they could not actually pay back. So individuals would buy houses with the intent of short selling. That dramatically rose the prices of housing. And eventually the people were not able to buy it. And when that started happening, the people who currently own the houses but intended to short sell could not actually make payments on the house. Um, that, again, went towards the houses, uh, houses foreclosing, which caused mass drops in the value of houses, which caused many Americans to actually lose a lot of, uh, a lot of funding and a lot of money and uh, economic stability. Now, uh, as to the second reason, the government does not adhere to the Constitution. Overbroad government laws, such as the, few, uh, the Foreign Interval Intelligence Surveillance Act of 1978 and the Patriot Act of, of 2001, allow the government to essentially create secret courts that it can acquire a general warrant from, again, similar to the writs of assistance, to spy on anybody deemed a threat. Now, the thing is, you can't determine. 
You can't vote for, directly for anybody in these courts, nor can you actually petition to see the warrant. So effectively, they can, the NSA is allowed to spy on whoever it wants, whenever it wants, for whatever reason. Um, the government does this through use of fear, uh, especially. It'll use things such as the terrorist attack of 2001 to, pa to pass the Patriot Act, which was aimed towards targeting terrorists, but has not significantly shown to stop any terrorism attacks, nor um, has not specifically shown to stop terrorist attacks, but it does allow them to spy on American citizens. Um, now that we've talked about some of the direct ways they do so, let's move on to the solutions we can do. Firstly, uh, what we can do is we can get the government out of the free market, and then we can get the government out of our private lives. Now, according to the article, Altruism, The Moral Root of the Financial Crisis, written by previously mentioned Richard Salzman in the scholarly journal, The Objective Standard, Volume 4, Number 1, in the spring 2012, America today does not enjoy a free market system, let alone a free market financial sector, nor has it enjoyed one for most of the past century. Only through a profound misunderstanding of what constitutes a free market system could anyone honestly blame capitalism for the financial crisis. What we need to do is we need to vote for people who can act, who actually understand how free market economics benefits us personally, and understands that government intervention is not the cure to most uh, situations. Uh, people like this are Gary Johnson, a uh, potential or very likely nominee of the Libertarian Party. Now, he even voices his support in saying, uh, the free markets and limited uh, government are the foundation of prosperity. <coughs> People like Gary Johnson are our best alternative to restricting uh, overly broad government within the government. But there are also other things we can do. Uh, firstly, we need to ditch, uh, on a personal note, we need to ditch companies that spy on us uh, and sell our data to the, essentially to the government. Companies such as Google, Facebook, Dropbox, all, all give our data away for money and we are essentially the product. Um, we, there are alternatives though. Uh, Google, a Google alternative would be DuckDuckGo, a Dropbox alternative would be SpiderBox. Um, and secondly, we can all spread awareness by telling other people that they are being spied on and that they're potentially being spied on. And we can sign the petition to stop mass surveillance, which actually has about half a million uh, signs right now. Uh, it is on... StandTallForAmerica.com. Um, now that we've talked about some of the solutions, let's wrap things up. Firstly, um, I hope that you guys were thoroughly convinced or at least heard uh, very good arguments that for the merits of individual liberty and uh, the perils of big government, I hope that you guys understand uh, why we need to take things into our own matters. And I just want to summarize what we talked about. We talked about how government caused the financial crisis of 2008 and other uh, economic instabilities. And I want to leave you with, uh, I talked about some of the causes, how they did so directly, and then um, the solution uh, that we can take part of. I want to leave you with this memorable closer. In this upcoming election, there are a lot of things, uh, a lot of potential bad people we could vote for, but we need to ensure that we have our essential liberties first.